Welcome to UK Theme Parks. And yes, it's a Q&A session. I didn't think we would have enough questions for a Q&A session, but the good people that follow the channel, which I am massively grateful for the support you give me, have thrown some questions at us for possibly our first q and I'm not sure I've done one before, but if I have, it hasn't been for many, many years. So once again, a huge thank you to the people that follow the channel and have thrown a question. I will do my best to answer them. Question number one, we're not starting off very strong, to be honest with you, because I can't answer question number one, and that's Voltron or Hyperia. Unfortunately, I've not ridden Voltron yet, so I can't give an honest answer of that. The natural answer is Hyperia at the moment, because that's the only one I've ridden. However, Voltron does feature a little bit further down the line as well. It's certainly a coaster that we would like to ride. Question number two, if you could visit a theme park one theme park for the rest of your life, which one would it be and why? Well, anyone that follows the channel knows that it would be Chesington World of Adventures. I've grown up with Chesington World of Adventures from riding the vampire in 1990 right the way to now and seeing how it's developed and not developed in some areas. I have so many memories of Chesington World of Adventures. Now, if we're going world-based, I would pick Disney's Epcot. I think Epcot is a beautiful park, absolutely beautiful. It's one of those parks you can walk around, not have to ride anything, take in the atmosphere, take in the scenery, and just enjoy yourself, whether it be food, um, whether it be sights, whether it be the amazing buildings they've got. I adore Disney's Epcot, and that's my favorite park outside the UK, but for UK only, definitely saying Chesington. P.S. I'm a big fan of your content. Keep it up. Again, a massive thank you. Massive thank you for following the channel. It does mean the world to me. Now we move over to Instagram for this one and it's double question as well. Best defunct ride in the UK. For me, Professor Burt Bubble Works. I still think to this day it's an absolute travesty that that ride isn't with us and blaring out the music and the colourful scenes and the quirkiness at Chesington at the moment. For me, it's the most missed ride. Other people might disagree. There are some other missed rides that I would actually throw into that, um, including things like Thunderlooper, Black Hole was a, a cracking coaster. Maybe they were a bit more generic. If you wanted to go less generic of recent time, I would 100% say The Ultimate, which I think, again, is, is devastating that we lost that from the UK. Best flat ride in the UK? Well, it, technically it's a traveling one, which is the Mondale Top Scan, which sits at Barry Island, which is, is simply called Top Scan. That thing is run incredibly. But of course, much like with Samurai, for instance, you can run these not so incredibly, so it's very difficult to say. If you wanted something a little bit more consistent and you wanted something a little bit more permanent, I would 100% say Time Machine at Adventure Island. I'm hoping it finishes its restoration very, very shortly. That thing is a beast of a ride. On to X and Chesington Buzz, uh, people that um, share the same passion as Chesington as what we do. What ride has been the transition ride for your boys from sort of small to larger roller coasters? And funnily enough, I've kept this the same all the way through the children's um, life. We start with a caterpillar. It's the easiest way to get the children on and see whether or not they enjoy roller coaster. It's not too thrilling, it's not gonna make them cry, it's, it's you know, they're, they're gonna want more after going on caterpillar. However much the caterpillar gets a bit of a hammering, it does have a job in life. It has a job in life. From there, there are two coasters. Vampire, 100% vampire. No questions asked. You get on Vampire, it's a bit rough and ready, it's a little bit more intense, you know, it's, it's fun, your legs swing around, and it gives you a really good taste to say, yeah, you know, yeah, that this is, this is the start of things to come. And that's exactly what I did as well. And I've only ever bought two ride photos as well of each of the children, and one of them was on that, and the next one is on the next one we take up to, which is Stealth. Um, there are other rides, obviously, Nemesis maybe, uh, Hyperia these days as well could be an option. But Stealth is one of those where you look at it and you're naturally intimidated. You're intimidated by the launch, you're intimidated by the size of it. And both of the children have looked at it and gone, no, straight away. But yeah, once they've done it, not only want to go back on, but are pretty much ready for anything else. Stealth is the only ride out of all the rides that we come across and they saw growing up where they were like, no. So that's my natural progression. Um, for the children. Now Zach asks, what is my favorite scene on the bubble works? Obviously we have to go back to Professor Burp and that will be the laughing gas room with the tickly toes. Now anyone that's on the channel uh, will have seen a little montage I put up because uh, when we went on the ride with the children, we would see which 
has the boat spun, who could lean over and tickle the foot. It was different every time. It was something they really looked forward to. And it's just, it was such a fun ride. It's so missed, it's so missed. But yeah, the laughing gaff room with the big feet. The next question, I've been loving your behind the scenes recently. You go into a lot more detail than some other channels. Which ride would you like to go behind the scenes of, or have you ever wanted to go behind the scenes of? Um, it could be anywhere in the world and keep up the good work. Again, I'm really, really pleased that you like some of the videos. You know, some of the local parks have been magnificent in giving us access to the rides. And it's been an eye-opener for me that a lot of the things, particularly on the Clarence Pier one of you haven't seen the one on the Mad Mouth, I didn't know. I learned as I went. Now, the dream for me, believe it or not, was Vampire. When they started doing the behind the scenes Vampire tour, uh, Kurt bought it for me for Father's Day and that was that is my that is my coaster that is my world that coaster now i have to say if you can go anywhere around the world it does open up completely different opportunities probably to look at new technology and i would say something like hagrid's magical motorbike adventures because i think the technology in that ride is breathtaking absolutely breathtaking when you think it's got seven eight uh, ride cars as well and the fact they have to you know maintain it to be open 365 and take them off put them back on and moving platforms seven launches loads of switch tracks drop tracks i i could probably spend all day and all night learning about that ride and i think it would be fascinating now the next question with a few merlin parts looking a bit tired this year what do you think about reducing entertainment uh, for like halloween and fireworks and things uh, that use towers as an example, and this could how much this money could help uh, fund the cost of repairs that are needed. It's definitely going to be subjective as to how run down you think some of the parks are. Some of them look worse than others. Some areas look worse than others. The only thing I'll say with entertainments is there is a great core of entertainments at the park. I can think of particularly Chesington. Um, and, and indeed Legoland when you think of uh, Pirates of Skeleton Cove. These are people that come back year in, year out that the park don't necessarily have to train. They don't have to you know, do anything out of the ordinary to go, this is the show, you guys can put it on. Really talented people. The problem with taking time off would be they would probably lose those people. My personal opinion is I think Merlin make enough money that um, the money should be there for the parks. And I think that they are closed long enough as well. When you think of parks around the world, I think they are closed long enough. November, December, January, February, minimum four months, certainly for the bigger parks. There might be areas open, but minimum four months for the bigger parks. That they should be able to drift a lot of people in to just get the parks up to scratch at the end of every season. I don't think money's the issue, to be honest with you. Budgeting might be an issue, but that's, that's down to the people above and the shareholders. And I would, I, I, I think the entertainments hold so much value, particularly to Chesington. I think if you take um, the entertainments out of Chesington's Halloween, I don't think they have an event left. I don't think they have anything really to offer. Um, they, I think they would have to open later. I just, I just can't see it. I 100% understand where you're coming from, but I think the money should be sourced elsewhere. Next question, what are your top five bucket list coasters? Well, yes. I do have some coasters I want to go on. Some of them may be a little bit shocking, some of them may not be. Uh, obviously, at the, actually I'll say these are in no particular order because I'd be happier to go on any of them tomorrow. Um, Voltron is right up there. Ride to Happiness, I guess would probably be number one to be honest with you if I had to put a number on it. I think Ride to Happiness looks incredible and I can't wait to get out and experience that, fingers crossed next year. It's the plan. And then I would look at Steel Vengeance because uh, I've done Iron Gwazi and I think Still Vengeance is the one that people compare it to more than Zandra. Uh, Kurt will be going on Zandra shortly, so it'd be nice to get his opinion as he's been on uh, Iron Gwazi as well. So Still Vengeance, and then I'd look a little bit maybe to the side. I, I'd love to try a Vekoma Tilt Coaster, to be honest, and I think more of them will come, but if I had to put sort of a name on it, I would say Fury 325. I think that thing looks absolutely mental. And I would pick X2, the multi-dimension coaster, because again, it's something a bit different. It's all right having you know these multi-launch coasters and these wonderful coasters that look things, but you know they look different. Ride to Happiness is different. Voltron's different. Fury 325 is a beast of a you know coaster with a traditional lift hill. I think X2 is different. So that would be my top five bucket list coasters. Next question, Merlin Entertainments. There's a new video featuring John Burton with the RMC mug, which um, we've all seen uh, leak once again, and then Hyperia backwards. What's your thoughts on this? Well, 
the question does come up a little bit further on as well. If an RMC comes to a Merlin Park, for me, it comes to Fort Park and it goes on the old Treasure Island. I can't see it going anywhere else in any of the Merlin Parks, sadly. I just, I just can't see it. I can't see Towers getting one. I can't see Chesington getting one. I certainly don't see Legoland getting one. I could only see it going to Fort Park. Will it happen? I, I don't know. To be perfectly honest with you, I know people want an RMC in the UK. I think it's worth noting as well that RMC's reliability record isn't fantastic across the world. And Merlin do generally like to work with the manufacturers that have quite a good uh, record. So I don't know. I don't know whether they will dive down that route um, and whether or not it's marketable without going and beating uh, Iron Gwazi's height or you know speed of... of equal to that and, and still vengeance. I don't know. I don't know if it's marketable, which means another you know, 200 plus foot coaster at Fort Park. I'm certainly not saying it's impossible, but I don't know is the honest answer to you. Uh, Hyperia backwards, I really hope not. I'm really, really sorry. I think the backwards seats on roller coasters ruin it. I hated it on the Swarm. Um, I thought you just, I just hated it. I just thought it was pointless. I, I don't know why I don't like backwards facing rows on roller coasters. I don't even think it works on Mandrel Mayhem, even though arguably it works better on that because you go forwards as well. I guess you're not always at the back, but I just don't like it. So I hope as the back row is absolutely mental on the Hyperia that it doesn't because I think the forces would actually ruin it. But I can see the appeal and I can see the appeal. Will they do it? I don't know whether Merlin will go back row on a coaster again uh, as obviously the reasons it was removed on Swarm were for I'm sure many people know the reasons why it was removed on Swarm. It certainly wasn't because it wasn't successful. I don't know whether they'd go down that route again. But, of course, I think we're more likely to get spinning seats first. Next question. If you could remove any coaster in the UK, what would you uh, remove and replace it with? For me, I always look at what would benefit the park the most. Not necessarily, you know, rip out A and put in this because it would look, you know, it's in the number one theme park. For me, it's Grand National. I know it's listed, I don't know how possible it is to rip it out, but Grand National for me is not what the park need and it's a big space taken up. And obviously, I would replace it with an RMC. You know, when I say it's gonna be Merlin, most likely to get an RMC, I still believe that. But RMC and the Grand National would breathe so much life into Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Um, where I don't know whether it would be as impactful on Fort Park because Pleasure Beach wouldn't have to build a 200 foot one. They wouldn't have to build the fastest and tallest in the world. They would just need to build a real quality coaster there. So for me, Grand National with an RMC because I think it would really benefit the park. Next question, would you rather go to Nemesis Reborn opening or Hyperia? Well, between us, we actually went to both. And from experiences, Hyperia's was far better organized and probably a better day. So I'm gonna say Hyperia. We have a multiple of questions here, which I really, really love. So first one, best ride opened this year globally. Now, obviously we've not traveled globally. We are mainly UK based, so we can't necessarily say that one ride might actually be better than the other. I think if you're looking obvious, you'd be looking at Voltron and Hyperia, which I think people that are traveled say uh, they're two of the best rides. You would probably throw in Top Thrill 2 for those that have been lucky enough to, to ride it. I think going backwards at 100 miles an hour sounds Mental, absolutely mental. So I'd love to give that a try. To throw something a little bit different out there, I would say I love the look of Good Gravy, the family boomerang <laughs> over in America. I think simple things sometimes, I think that coaster looks fantastic fun for the family. And then on top of that, I look at Minecart Madness, which is the Donkey Kong ride, which is open at Universal, uh, I believe in Japan, which will obviously be coming to Epic Universe as well. You know, it's just the uniqueness of that ride, I'm sure, is gonna, is gonna catch a lot of people by surprise and, and put smiles on people's faces. Because at the end of the day, it's not all about the thrill. Sometimes it's just walking off smiling. So yeah, I think globally, I, I'd say actually arguably globally, I think many people would say it's been quite a slow year, but I think there are some, some peaks in there and uh, Top Thrill 2 is definitely one I would like to experience. If I had to say, Merlin, what ride would I put in what park? Now again, I'm gonna look logistically from a beneficial to the park not put an RMC in at Fort Park, although I do think they should do that. Um, I'm gonna look at something that would benefit the park. I still think that Chesington would benefit 
from a world-class roller coaster. Now, there's nothing wrong with Mandrel Mayhem, but I think even though it's been open just over a year now, many people will still say that Vampire is the better coaster at Chessington World of Adventures. Bearing in mind, it opened in 1990. It really shouldn't be the case when they've had coasters come since. And I would take, and I've always said this, a 13-style ride, and I would put it in at Chessington. A well-themed 13-style ride with no trim brakes on the drop, a well-designed one. Um, you know, we know they don't work with Intamin anymore, but Ziara do these as well uh, because Legoland have got one, so we know Merlin would buy one. And I think a world-class themed one, a family themed one with a couple of really, you know, sharp elements, whether it be a bit of airtime and a bit of twisting, plus the drop track as well, would do Chesington the world the world honestly going forward so that's what i would do do you think the uk is lacking good water rides particularly flume rides uh, it's definitely disappointment that rides like flume and um arguably loggers leap were removed from the uk we've seen quite a lot of traveling ones go over the years as well i don't really understand why i kind of get the rapids i kind of get the rapids it's hard to get people to do what you want them to do on the rapids i don't think that's necessarily the case on log flumes but they are expensive to run and then they are expensive now you have to have clean water which i think really is the primary reason why we lost the other two and there are some good ones out there and there are some water coasters out there that might be more of an option now rather than a log flume but yeah i i think that we look at the weather over here we just they just don't bother and the cost of running as well you know finding out from funland how much it, it costs them to run their log flume you just wouldn't believe you absolutely wouldn't believe how much it costs them to run it a day and that's probably the real reason why we haven't got them best ride i have ever ridden well it will be my number one coaster and that will come up shortly so i won't ruin the number one coaster because that comes up shortly any idea of what the top spin at Alton towers will be called no to be honest with you i hope it's not ripsaw related if it's ripsaw reborn i'm gonna lose my what's it because i think it's lazy so it needs to be something i don't know I don't know. It's going to be a suspended top spin. I think we all know that. It just needs to be something a bit more special than that. So I'm, I'm hoping it's something a bit more special than that. Then we come on to the next one, which is obviously the top five coasters. I knew someone would ask this. I knew someone would ask this. And it's always very difficult as well, top five coasters, because it's, it's obviously subjectable between people. And we'll go in reverse order as well. Number five. It's Stealth. And I love Stealth because of the launch. I think the launch on Stealth is something else. I, it takes my breath away every single time and every time my adrenaline just pumps for Stealth. I just love it. I don't care how long the ride is. I don't really care what it does afterwards. That initial launch is incredible. I'd love to have tried Dodo Dompa. Would love to have tried it because it's the speed of it, not so much the getting to the 80 miles an hour sort of eventually like some of the other coasters do it's just the speed in which it does it is incredible stealth at number five number four i will put hyperia it, it might be jumping a bit on the bandwagon but i think hyperia brings so much to the world not just the uk some of the elements that mac have put on there um, are just insane I, I think the drop is probably the best drop on a roller coaster i've experienced of course i'm not as seasoned veteran i've only got sort of 200 plus um coaster creds but for me, Hyperia just brings so much to it. If it was just that little bit longer, I think it would be staying on a lot of people's, a lot of people's top. But I, I just think it's an incredible coaster and, and Merlin's best investment in years. Number three is Iron Guazi. I think Iron Guazi was a total out of control coaster. It just felt wild, absolutely wild. Back row on that is one of the scariest experiences I've had on a roller coaster. The the Death drop, whatever they call it, the twist, is the best element I've experienced on a roller coaster. I just think that Iron Guazi was incredibly paced, so fast, just everything about it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Number two is a little nostalgic, it's the Vampire. And I know what many of you might be thinking, but if you know me, the Vampire is what I grew up with. That is my first big coaster, that was my, my go-to coaster, and it still is these days. I can ride it over and over and over again, and I just wanna, you know, I just want it to be there for my lifetime. Uh, I love it. I absolutely love Vampire. I just think it's such a good underrated ride with so much history. It doesn't necessarily have to be the best ride, but it's just got so much to it and it holds a lot to me, so that's why it's there. Now, beforehand, Nemesis would have been number one, but you'll notice that Nemesis Reborn hasn't featured so far and it's not going to feature either because I don't think it rides like Nemesis, sadly. I hope they sort it out. Uh, I think it's a B&M problem. I don't think it's an Autumn Towers problem. And I hope they sort it out. 
to be honest with you. And number one would be Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. When I rode this coaster last year, I was I was taken back just by how good it is. What Vekoma does for Disney is just insane, absolutely insane. Why, why no one else is getting this technology, whether or not they're allowed this technology is just beyond me. But the ride is just brilliant from start to finish. Everything about it, from the queue lines, the preparation. I don't even think you need to like Guardians of the Galaxy, to be honest with you, to appreciate it you know the the soundtrack the music the visuals everything you see in there is just amazing i absolutely adore the ride and i can't wait to ride it again after chesington finished building the water park what do you think the future holds well first things first i'm i'm still not 100 percent sure they're going to build the water park if i'm being honest i think the water park has gone in i think it's going to require quite a lot of work quite a lot of infrastructure and i'm i'm, I'm just not sure I'm not sure I'd like to see it done, and I'd like to tell you that it's 100% going to happen, but I I don't necessarily think it's 100% going to happen. In terms of what I'd like the park to do, and that's sort out the zoo, I don't think that's going to happen either. I think we will slowly see the end of Chesington Zoo and the animals and the animal experiences, and I think it will be more family theme park. I think they will go more rides than they will animals, which I think will be a real shame because the balance is good it needs improving by all means but i think the balance is good across the park but yeah i, I don't know whether it's a concrete plans for chesington yet but we'll have to wait and see what is your favorite roller coaster and theme park in the uk we've probably gone through this it's vampire and of course chesington a world of adventures right here's the first interesting one on universal uk do you think the universal uk a season pass will be worth getting or wait until they've done an expansion. I think it will be worth getting from day one. And the reason for this is that Universal do things that no one else does in the UK, and I believe they will come over here and continue to do things that no one else does in the UK. That's not just 365 opening, um, you know, that's the level of detail, that's the um, food experiences, that's the nighttime experiences, that's the shopping experiences, the merchandise, the you know everything about universal is on a different level you know halloween horror nights in the uk some of the summer parades some of the shows potential fountains and fireworks and drone shows there'll be so much more offered there that we're so far behind on in the uk a full stop so for me day one 100 percent day one the next one's an interesting one what do you think of professor burt rumors to come back to chesington and what do you think of a small woody bit like zipper dipper at blackpool pleasure beach going into chesington and what do you think they will build on the swarm island the old treasure island down at fort park well first i've not actually heard anything about professor burps coming back sadly i'd love it to come back i think the gruffalo was a not a great choice i don't think you'll meet anyone that prefers it and I get we're of a different age now, and maybe children might stay the same, um, but I'd like to see the IPs removed from Chesington as a, as a general rule, apart from maybe Jumanji's, that's fresh, and take the original one. So I'd love to see it come back, 100% would support it. Would a Zipper Dipper do them? No. And the reason why I say that is that you just know how they're run. They're run by, by Merlin, Merlin like this sing and dance to anything they do. Anything small like that is not a sing, it's not advertisable for Chesington. It's just not. So I just can't see them doing it. That said, if they do wipe out the zoo, at the top end of the zoo, and they're able to build on it, you know, even a Wicker Man style coaster up there would would be marketable for them. Um, it, particularly if they do keep animals and they go with a zoo thing would make more sense. I don't think a little one will do it. I don't think they would do it. I don't think capacity would be good enough. And I just don't think they would go through the hassle of doing it. Sadly, I, I'd, I'd like to see it. Genuinely would like to see any kind of, you know, good theme wooden coaster. I, I think Wicker Man, really underrated. Love to see one at Chesington. And then the RMC. Yeah, as we said, I think an RMC for that island is, is where an RMC would go in the UK. And I think it would go to Fort Park and I'd love to see it there. I think we're all a little bit, I, I think maybe we judge Hyperio a bit too much at the moment. I'd, I'd like to see how the area looks this time next year when Fort Park have had closed season to do it. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that. But yeah, you would like to see it with a theme. I think, um, you know, Drayton Manor have arguably opened the best coaster this year in terms of completeness. Some might argue Nemesis, uh, and I get that, but things have been added to Nemesis since it opened. Um, you know, at the top end, it, it's 
still looks like a building site around the left hand side of the queue. I know you're drawn to the right hand side looking at the ride, but the rest of it doesn't, where I think Gold Rush actually brings it together much nicer. What top five things would you change, replace, or improve at Chesington? Well, how much time have you got? I'll keep it simple. Number one, a retrack of the vampire to secure its future. Simple as that. Retrack of the vampire, secure its future. It's, it's, it's a coaster that belongs, yeah, nothing else said. I'd remove the IPs, the general IPs, things like Gruffalo, Room of the Broom. Um, you know, the, the in-house ones were better. There's no doubt about it. And I think when you look at what the work they've done, even on Tomb Blaster, to be honest, it won't be everyone's cup of tea, but Curse of Autumn Manor, for instance, and what they can do in-house, I just don't think they need it. I think they should spend a little bit more money and just make it a little bit more in-house. I'd like to see the theme improved around the park. It was, you know, branded as the first theme park. Whether or not it was is debatable, but branded as the first theme park. And the theme initially was incredible. And there are areas which are improving, but there are areas where you just like, you know, let's just let's just get it done. Merlin put some money in, let, let Chesington do it. I'd love to see a revamp of the zoo. I think the zoo is integral to Chesington, particularly as an all year round opening park. I think the zoo areas look a little tired at the moment. And I, I think they all need a little bit of love. And it might mean they need to close the zoo for winter periods and maybe not even run a winter event, but I think it will be worth it in the long term. And then finally, I'd like to see Rattlesnake replaced with a high capacity coaster. Now it may not seem like such a big space, but since Rattlesnake was built in 1998, you know, a lot of coaster technologies have come along that could, uh, you know, put something really, really good in that space. And maybe a little bit beyond as well. I think when you look at what the Smiler packs into its area, I think it's a good opportunity for Chesington to do that. What are your thoughts on Flamingo Land at the moment? I've never been, but I'm going at the beginning of October. Well, Flamingo Land, as many of you know, has just been voted as the UK's worst park. Am I surprised? No. No, I'm not surprised. Flamingo Land is one of those. If you catch it on an off-peak day, potentially you will at the beginning of October, you will have one of the best days out because it doesn't matter how many trains are on the track, as long as the rides are open, everything will be walk-on all day long and you will get the whole park done. And it's just, it's brilliant. If you go on a busy day, you will have one of your worst days out and feel completely ripped off. Uh, the £45 price tag is astronomical. I, I don't know where they're coming from on that. The operations at Flamingo Land, we've commented on quite a lot in our recent vlogs that we have been to the park, have been steadily getting worse over the years. You know, I remember Velocity had two trains, the motorbike one. Kamali had two trains when it opened. You know, uh, Hero, I think, had six trains. Mumbo Jumbo has five, I believe. And they just windled them down. You know, it's not acceptable for a theme park to charge £45, post an hour queue and only have one train on the track. Now, sick, I know they've only got one train and they're not cheap to come by or easy to come by, to be fair. I'll give them a pass on that. But the other ones, they do have more trains. They, they, unless they sold them, they have more trains. And I think that's the really frustrating part. So if you're going on an off-peak day, you'll justify the price and I think you'll have a wonderful time. If you're going on a peak day, quite frankly at the moment until they approve operations, I wouldn't go. What's the best seaside theme park that also has a crazy golf? Well, I think that depends on where you are in the country. I love my one down at uh, Clarence Pier here. I think it's got a wonderful, uh, it's got a wonderful crazy golf. Um, the one at Southport is an incredible Viking themed crazy golf. I don't know if there's anything wrong with that. South End have got one as well. So I think it depends where you are in the country. There are some really good um, seaside fun parks. With Crazy Golf, you know, you can argue Pleasure Beach has got a Crazy Golf. It's probably not as good as the other ones. So yeah, I think it depends on where you are in the country, to be honest with you. Right, quite a big one here. Quite a big question. A couple, actually, which we like. Biggest flop of a new coaster. What coaster has been around too long and needs to go? What year do you think the new Universal Park will open in the UK and will it be as good as the others? Um, and will Everton get relegated? Well, well, we'll start with the most important question in the room. Everton will not get relegated, obviously. Don't pin that on me at the end of the year. Biggest flop of a new coaster. Well, in my lifetime, I think the biggest flop of a new coaster would be 13, sadly. Um, and that's purely down to the way it was advertised. Nothing else, purely down to the way it was advertised. It wasn't what it was hyped up to be. And adding the trim brakes after week one have has killed the coaster, which is a real shame because is it still a flop now? Probably not, to be honest with you. It's probably not regarded as a flop. But I think in terms of opening... Uh, it would be 13. And for the record, I, I think it's a fantastic coaster, just implemented wrong. 
and then we'll stay in that area for the next part of the question. The coast that's been there too long is Rita. It seemed a real snap by Rita when the corkscrew was there. That was a lovely open plan area. You got wonderful views of the corkscrew um, and you could really theme it, it, really theme it. For me, it's the weakest area at Orton Towers. I, I don't think Rita, we rode it the other day for the first time in years. I don't think it rides very well. It's not the worst coaster in the world, but it just is in the middle of everything. It's just in the way of everything. And there's nothing else going on in that area. And I'd love some nice views of 13. I, you could get some really good views of 13, a little bit better theme in. So yeah, for me, it's Rita. Uh, and I know there'll be other ones. People will say, oh, Grand National, Big Dipper and things. There's heritage involved with those, which is why I haven't, I haven't said them. Universal UK. Well, we touched on it very slightly. Do I think it will be good? Yeah, I do think it will be good. And I've seen a few people uh, talking about Universal UK and saying that they don't shouldn't bring in unique IPs and they should bring in stuff they've already got. And I'm going to completely disagree. 100% disagree. I don't want them to bring in what they've got because I still want to be able to visit Florida, for instance, uh, potentially the other parks as well. I don't want that on my doorstep. I want something unique on my doorstep. And I think when you look at it as well, you look at it from a marketing point of view, if they open Universal UK with all the same areas as what all the other Universals has, who's 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 coming, who's flying in to visit? Absolutely no one. Why would you? Why would you? So it's got to have unique IPs. If you would bring an IP in, I would like to see Jurassic World. Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, but they won't bring that in because it mainly focuses around a water ride, which is no way Universal are going to build in this climate. In that case, I'd like to see Super Mario World. Other than that, I want to see, um, I want to see Unique, and that includes Paddington and James Bond, which are heavily rumoured. That's what I want to see. I, I want people to visit the country and give the country a boost, and I want something on my doorstep that's completely different to what I would fly to America to experience. I don't, I don't see why you would want the same. It's really odd that you would want the same. Um, it won't be successful for them if they do exactly the same because people from here fly to Florida for exactly the same. So yeah, it's a strange view that people have on this, but it's got to be unique to an extent, unique with just a little bit of originality to you know maybe draw in the locals. If it's implemented right by Universal, it should be absolutely fine. And things like Universal Monsters, for instance, are quite universal across the board. They can get away with that with a completely different ride type to what they're opening at Epic Universe. So yeah, when do I think it will open? From what we've heard, contracts have been signed. Uh, contracts have also been signed with coaster manufacturers as well for building equipment and things. I, I seriously think this is going ahead. And I would think that given Epic Universe's time frame from sort of planning groundwork, you look about five years, I think they would be looking at 2030 for it. Is there any theme park you haven't been to yet that you'd love to go to? Yes, Europa Park. Are you going out to Florida next year for Epic Universe? And what do you think about it? I'm going out to Florida next month. Kurt is definitely going to Epic Universe. He's booked his trip to Epic Universe. He's booked two trips to Florida next year. It'll definitely be open for one of them. And I'll decide whether or not I'm going back out next year. I think it looks incredible, absolutely incredible. I love some of the originality on it. Whilst throwing in a bit of familiar as well, particularly with like Harry Potter, for instance, I think the monsters area will be uh, incredible. I'm not a massive fan of how to train your dragon, but the park looks beautiful. You know, I follow the construction. I watch the, the theme park stop and the, the bio construct picks. I just incredible what they do out there to cover construction. And I think it will be massive massive for florida massive for the people visiting and it will be a must an absolute must destination next question are there uh, are theme parks such as camel cream Capri theme parks better than major theme parks in terms of staff let me just spell out straight away the best staff in the uk are adventure island always have been for me and probably always will be i don't know what they do down there but they are the best staff it's difficult because you can meet great staff in, in fact, I would say at, at, at smaller parks, you meet better staff because they're more invested than what they are at the major theme parks, from experience. The two in question, I've not visited Camel Creek, to be honest with you, hands up, not visited Camel Creek. And my Creeley Devon one was marred by uh, one of the worst things I've ever seen by a member of staff, which was one of the supervisors jumping the coaster track while the coaster was in motion. So it may not be the best two to, to go with, but I think when you look at like Paulton's Park, Generally, the people at Portons Park are excellent. You'd probably class that as a smaller park. You meet great people everywhere. We met some great people down at um, Creeley Devon. I met some of the, the theme park awards as well. 
uh, and they were lovely, absolutely lovely. The the major ones, I would say hit and miss. So yeah, uh, I think in answer to your question, I would probably say the staff are better at smaller parks. I think it's probably because they have to be. There we have it, a QA, and a possibly our first. I think we'll start labeling them now. We'll try and do one every, every sort of six weeks. If people are interested, they have questions to ask. By all means, we'll probably pin the posts and you can come back and ask a few questions and any questions we get asked, we'll save for the video. But thank you, thank you again so much for your support. We are approaching 11,000 subs. We don't tend to count them, to be honest with you, but it is a nice milestone to have um, as this is, this is a hobby of mine and I'm very, very passionate about theme parks. You know, I do this as a hobby. I don't do it as a, as a business by any stretch. I work full time and I'm so grateful, so, so, so grateful for everyone that comes along for the ride. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you at the parks.